Hello, today we're going to talk about image formation by lenses. So we have three goals today. First, we're going to compare and contrast spherical mirrors and lenses. We'll go over the basic equations we apply to lenses. And finally, we'll discuss the process of drawing a ray diagram for a lens. And the reason you do that is to get some idea of where the image is. So, what differences can you think of between lenses and mirrors? Here are some obvious ones. So, light reflects from a mirror. On the other hand, light goes through and is refracted by a lens. So that's certainly a big one. Lenses actually have two focal points, one on either side of the lens, equidistant from the center of the lens, and mirrors only have one. And that's really because light can come to the lens from either side as the light goes through. Where with mirrors, you have to have the light on the correct side, the reflective side of the mirror. Another difference is that convex mirrors, as we know, diverge parallel rays, while concave mirrors converge them. And in general, this is not always true, but it's generally true, particularly in the case where you have, say, glass or pla plastic lens, lenses in air. Uh, convex lenses converge parallel rays, and concave lenses diverge them. Okay, so there are some big differences between lenses and mirrors, but there are also some very important similarities. Okay, so now, what similarities can you think of between lenses and mirrors? And this is a really good one. And here we say the equations we use for mirrors also work for lenses. And in particular, the magnification equation and what we call the mirror equation. Now we're going to call it the thin lens equation. Okay. There is one equation that actually doesn't work for uh, mirrors. It's different for lenses, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But it's kind of interesting that, uh, that those equations, the, at least the magnification and the uh, mirror equation or thin lens equation, is the same. Converging lenses are much like converging mirrors. Okay, So both converge parallel rays to a focal point. They have positive focal lengths, and they form images with similar characteristics. So if you know how converging mirrors work, you have a pretty good idea for how converging lenses work too. And similarly, diverging lenses work in a way that's a lot like the way diverging mirrors work. They both diverge parallel rays away from a focal point. They both have negative focal lengths, and they only form virtual smaller images. Okay, so let's go to the thin lens equation. And of course, you know, we love to draw ray diagrams. We encourage you to do that. And the reason we do that is so you get a good idea of what's going on with the image, where it is, what the characteristics are. But we can also be very quantitative. We can calculate distances uh, using the thin lens equation and heights. The heights generally come in through the magnification equation. And once again, we can derive these equations from the geometry of similar triangles and that's really why you get the same equations. Okay, so we've seen this equation before. We called it the mirror equation when we were doing mirrors. Now we're calling it the thin lens equation where we're doing lenses. And there's a little mnemonic to remember this by. If I do, I die. And it's very convenient that it's the same equation we use for mirrors. And up front, it's really surprising that this is the same equation, actually, because mirrors work. Uh, by obeying the law of reflection. So the light, when it hits a mirror, obeys the law of reflection. Uh, when a light passes through a lens, it refracts. It refracts twice, once at each lens surface. And Snell's law is completely different from the law of reflection. And yet, very conveniently, you end up coming down to the geometry of similar triangles, and that leads to the same equations. And as we did before with mirrors, we can write this equation as di, the image distance, is do, the optic distance times the focal length, over do minus f. Okay, and that's often the way we, um, we use it, because we usually know the optic distance and the focal length, and then we calculate di. 
however, you can get you know any one of the three things if you know two of the other ones. And also note that DO and DI are uh, in the 1 over F is 1 over DO plus 1 over DI in equivalent ways. So in our second equation, we can actually transpose the DO and the DI, and it also works. So DO is DI times F over DI minus F. That'll also work. Okay, so let's talk about the focal length. Now, this is a big difference, actually, between lenses and mirrors. This is the, the uh, one equation that works for lenses, and it's a completely different thing for mirrors. Okay, so the focal length is determined by what's called the lens maker's equation. So 1 over f is the index of refraction of the lens divided by the index of refraction of the medium that the lens is in. That ratio, minus 1, multiplied by 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. I'm actually using a little bit different sign convention than other people do. And what I'm going to say is that my r's are going to be positive if the surface is convex and negative if it, the surface is concave. Okay, so if you have a... And remember there's two r's because there's two surfaces to the lens, the front and the back. So if you get convex on both sides, I'm going to use positive. R is for both. If it's concave on both sides, I'm going to use negative for both. Okay, so one neat thing is that um, it really depends on what the lens material is and what the medium is. For instance, if the lens and the medium were the same material, you know, this ratio here would be 1. 1 minus 1 would be 0. Okay, so your 1 over f is actually 0. The lens does no focusing at all. And that's expected because there's no change of direction of the light when you pass from one medium to another when the indices of refraction are the same. You can also get a positive or a negative sign coming out of this first bracket in the equation. Okay? The lens material is larger than the, if the index of refraction of the lens material is larger than the index of refraction of the medium, then you'll get a positive value and lens minus n medium over n medium minus 1 will be positive. If the medium's n is larger than the lens's n, that's a little unusual, but it can happen, then you'll get a negative coming out of the bracket. Okay, so you got to watch out for things like that. Okay, but the typical case is the n medium is 1 because the medium is air and n lens is maybe 1.5 or 1.6 or some number like that because of plastic or glass lens. So convex lens has two focal points. The focal length is the same on both sides. In this case, con uh, this con convex lens converges rays to the focal point on the right. And then you've got a double concave lens here. And it diverges parallel rays away from that focal point on the left. And if you brought in the rays from the right side, that would diverge the rays away from the focal point on the right. Okay, here's our magnification equation. Magnification is the image height over the object height, h over h i over h o. That's also equal to minus d i over d o. And there's a lovely set of similar triangles that explains that. So if the magnitude of m is, uh, so I'm sorry, if m itself is positive, then that means the image is upright compared to the object. If m is negative, the image is inverted compared to the object. Here's the part of the magnitudes. If the magnitude of m is larger than 1, the image is larger than the object. If the m magnitude is less than 1, the image is smaller than the object. And of course, you can also have cases where m is equal to 1 and the image is exactly the same size as the object. And our magnification equation tells us in that case, it would also be the same distance away from the lens as the object is. Okay, so let's talk about some sign conventions. We've got to agree on, on signs, plus and minus signs, what they mean. And we just follow the light, usually, to uh, keep track of our signs. So, usually we start with the object on the left, and the light leaves the object and travels to the right and interacts with the lens. Now, with the case of the mirror, the mirror reflected that light back to the left, and so where the light was was always positive. The lens is the opposite. The lens allows the light to pass through it, and so then the right-hand side 
is the positive side for images. And the left-hand side is the negative side for images. Uh, once again, as we saw for mirrors, F is positive for a converging lens and negative for a diverging lens. In this case, the convex lens is converging and the concave lens is diverging in the case shown in the picture. Okay, more things about signs. If the image distance is positive, then the image is on the opposite side of the lens of the object. That's where the light goes. Okay, so this first picture shows that scenario. And with a single lens, if you get a positive image distance, you'll all, always have a real inverted image. Uh, conversely, if the image distance is negative, that means the image is on the same side of the lens as the object is. And with a single lens, you'll find the image to be virtual and upright as well. Again, negative M means the image is inverted. So this top case has a negative M. But also it has an M uh, with a magnitude greater than 1 because the image is larger than the object. This bottom case, it's got a positive M because the image is upright. And that case would also have uh, a magnitude of M less than 1 because the image is quite a bit smaller than the object. Okay, so here's our general method for analyzing lens situations. And what is a lens problem? Well, what we usually do is we say, okay, here's a lens, here's an object, where's the image, what kind of image is it, real or virtual, upright or inverted, things like that, smaller, larger than the object. So first thing you want to do is draw a ray diagram. We will go over uh, the basic rays to draw. And do this carefully, draw it with a ruler, and you'll do a good job at uh, figuring out where the object is, images, sorry, the images. Secondly, you can apply the equations, both the thin lens equation as well as the magnification equation. You'll often want to work with them together to determine things like image distances and heights and things like that. Finally, check what you get from step two with what you got in step one. Okay, they should be consistent with each other, and if they're not, that's a big clue that you're doing something wrong. Okay, so let's go over the basics of drawing a ray diagram for a lens situation. And, you know, any, any ray will work, but we generally stick with three common rays because we know what they're going to do when, they inter when those rays interact with the lens. Okay, so here's our basic ray diagram with a double convex lens uh, with our three basic rays. We'll go over them in turn. Okay, so the first one we draw, we often call that the parallel ray. It's drawn from the tip of the object, goes parallel to the principal axis. And then we know that uh, the lens's job here is to converge that ray, because it converges all parallel rays to the focal point. It converges this parallel ray, so it passes through the focal point, the focal point on the far side of the lens. If it was a di di diverging lens, then the ray is going to be diverging away from the focal point on the left-hand side. Okay, So there's the red ray. And one thing to note here is that we take some shortcuts when we're drawing these uh, ray diagrams because this shows the ray changing direction in the exact center of the lens. Okay, that's just completely bogus, of course, because the change in direction is going to happen when the medium changes. So if, we're, if the ray is in air and then encounters that front surface of the lens and the lens is made out of glass, that's where it's going to bend, and it's going to bend again coming back out of the lens back into the air. Okay, so we're not showing it drawn correctly inside the lens, but we're doing a pretty good job outside the lens, and that's generally where it matters. Okay, but we are doing some uh, some shortcuts there with our ray diagram. Really bends twice, once at the front and back surfaces of the lens, um, and not in the middle. Okay, the second ray in blue, we show just going straight through the center of the lens, doesn't change direction. Now that is something of an approximation. Uh, the thinner the lens is, the better that approximation is going to be. And also the farther away the object is from the lens, and really the shorter it is too, actually, uh, the better that approximation is going to be to what really happens. Okay. And then finally with this ray in green, and that connects the tip of the object to the other focal point, the one we haven't used with the parallel ray. And then you see that ray going to the lens and then 
changing direction so, so it comes out parallel to the principal axis. Well, how do we know that's going to happen? Well, all these rays are reversible. So if you reverse that ray, have it coming in from the right, parallel to the principal axis, interacting with the lens, then we know the lens's job is to bring all parallel rays to a focal point. Okay, so you can reverse the direction of that ray and it makes sense. So if we go this way from the object through the focal point to the lens, we know it's got to come out parallel to the principal axis. And look at that, all three of our rays meet at the same point, and so that's going to be where our image is located. And the base of the object was on the principal axis, so the base of the image also has to be there as well. Okay, that's the whole point of drawing the ray diagram. So we know where the image is, and we know it's a real image because the light, light rays all go through that point, and it's larger than the object, inverted. We know lots of stuff about it. Okay, now, remember, we only often draw three, and really you only need to draw two of those to get the image location, but all rays will converge. All rays that leave the tip of the object will converge at the tip of the image. And we just generally don't draw these ahead of time because we, uh, well, we don't draw them because we don't know what they're going to do ahead of time. So once we've established where the image is, we know we can draw as many other rays as we want. And then we're all set.